Hey, what's going on everybody? Looking at some sales data today. We have items we're selling such as baby food, snacks, beverages, cereal, the region around the world from which they sold, the country, sales channel, and then we have some other uh, attributes. Order date, ship date, how much it cost, how much revenue, and the profit. We're going to be taking a look at six objectives. So let's just jump right in. I'm going to copy my objective over to a solutions tab. All right, which region has the longest handling time defined as the difference in order date and ship date? Which item type can't use a new field in the data table? All right, so if I'm going to the data table, I need to add a new column called handling time. And I want that to be the difference between the ship date and the order date. So that's expressed in days. So that's a handling time of 22 days. I'm going to double click to fill it down. Now each record has this handling time attached to it. Let's control A, insert pivot table, put it on an existing worksheet. And let's pull in region, handling time. Let's do average handling time. And I'm going to make that a number with one decimal. And we can sort that from high to low, throw a quick bar chart on to visualize. And there we can see by region, North America had the longest handling time. Australia and Oceania had the shortest. Now let's look at handling type by item. That was by region. Now let's look by item. Pulling region out. Pull item type in. Let's sort again, high to low. And we can see snacks had the longest handling time. Cosmetics had the shortest. Objective number two. Are there some products whose processing time differs between regions? In other words, the same product sold in different regions takes longer or shorter to process. If that's unclear, just bear with me. We'll walk through this one. So let's insert a new pivot table. Existing, let's pick our solutions. Okay, processing time again. That was the handling time we calculated. Let's pull that in. Item we need. And let's pull region on top of that. And let's make handling time an average. So the average handling time for each record. Okay, so we can see in this table we just made, here's a region. Here are all the products within that region and their various handling times. Now we want to look, does baby food take longer to process in Asia than Australia, than Central America, and so on? Let's pull this into a bar chart. It's going to be a little bit easier to see. So, and actually, let me sort that from high to low first. Okay, here we go. I'm going to have to really blow this up so we can see it. So, stacks, I need to s swap these. Yes, okay, so this is what we're looking for. See how I have this grouped? Here's snacks. Here's the processing time for snacks across the region. You can see Asia did it in 30.6 days, North America 19, and so on across all the different items. So you can see how I have that shown in this chart. Here's like the cereal cluster right here. Here's how long it took in each region sorted. So you can clearly see that some regions can handle a product more quickly than other regions, despite it being the same product. All right. Number three, show profit by region over time by month. Add country as a level within the chart. Okay, let's grab a new pivot table, insert pivot table existing. Profit by region over time. So I know we have a profit field, so let's pull that in values. By region, so we want a region. Let's make our profit dollars. 
and they went over time by month. So let's use the order date. And this shows it by year. Could do insert. Let's check out this chart. Let me make it monochromatic in the design. So here's profit by year. So here's Asia. Just look at this first cluster of bars. That's Asia's profit over time. And we can see at 2017, it really cuts off. I think the data set does not go, go all the way through 2017. So that's why it's so low. We can see the trends over time. If we were to pull in month, so let's ungroup these dates. And then let's regroup them, pulling in months and years. And there you can see profit by month over time. And because we have a lot of time series, it, they're pretty crowded, but nonetheless, there you go. And you can always look at it in the chart as well. Here's profit by region by month. Show sales volume by item over time. Okay. So let's do insert pivot table. Let's put it right here. And we want to buy item, so I'm going to take item type, put it here. Sales volume is called unit sold. Let's make that a sum, a number with no decimals. Let's do that by order date. So we can see which items are picking up in sales, which are dropping off. And so on. Same deal, same chart as before. Change that. All right, so we can see, you know what? I'm going to exclude 2017 from this chart because it's not a complete year. So the way you do that is go into this filter right here and deselect 2017. All right, well, we can see stuff like office supplies is really ramping up. Then it tapered off. Beverages, the last two years, really jumped. As far as quantity sold, vegetables, big jump in the last year. Okay, next. Does processing time vary by priority? Let's see what that is. So in the data table, there's this field right here called order priority and some kind of coding. I'm not sure what these codes mean. I didn't construct this data set, but we'll take a look. Insert pivot table. System, let's put it in solutions. And, and let's pull in order priority. And let's use the handling time field that we created. Let's make that an average with one decimal. Sort it from high to low, throw in a quick chart. Okay, so the H handling time is takes the longest, the C takes the shortest. And let's just look at that over time, how it's been changing. Let's go by order date. And it's all one color. Okay, so if you were doing using the L uh, order priority, over time they've really cut down how long it takes to handle that product. C has popped up in this last year, kind of cut back down. That's interesting. Let's pull in the item just to see how that looks. I'm going to just restrict it to a couple items so we can just see how it looks in the chart. So we have baby food. Here's the different order types, order priorities. They look pretty similar. Let me try to look at it this way. 
all the L order priorities across the different products. Meh, nothing really jumping out at me there. All right, number six, the last one. Calculate a profit margin and show how it has changed over time. Show this at the region and the product level. Okay, insert. Again, I have all the data selected by doing Control A, Insert, Pivot Table. Where do I want my pivot table? Right here. And let me back up. I don't even think we have a profit margin in the data table, so we need to create one. Let's call it profit margin. Spell it, format it correctly. And that's defined as your profit divided by your total revenue. And it's a percent. So let's drag that all the way down. Let's redefine our pivot table to include that new field. So I'm going to pivot table analyze, change data source, and see how right here it's going right up to that last field but not including it. There, I just moved it over one so we can pull that in now and report on it. All right, we've got profit margin. Show how, to, how it has changed over time. Okay, so let's pull in, we want order date. Show this at the region level. Let's make profit margin a percent. And an average. All right, so let's pull in chart. How has profit margin changed over time by region? Uh, you could say it's pretty pretty steady. You see Central America had this dip and then recovered. North America had this big spike here. They were probably selling a lot more high margin items. Um, I think we'll see that clothing, for example, is a high margin item in, in North America. Probably sold more clothing that year. Um, one thing I want to point out and we can mess around with is the scale of this axis. See how it's going from 0 to 50? <clears throat> if we were to restrict the scale and start it at 25, we'll be able to see the volatility a little bit better. So let's do that. Format axis. Minimum. Let's start it at 0.25. Enter. There you go. You can see the <clears throat> the changes over time a little bit more clearly. Now the axis starts at 25. It goes to 45. All right, let's finish up the question. Show this at the region level. Okay, so we did that. Let's show it at the product level, which is item type. And here is the profit margin by item type. So here's clothing has the highest profit. Baby food's kind of in the middle. Fruits have virtually no profit margin. Let's take this axis down, back down to zero. So we can clearly see everything. It's not chopping anything off. Meat has the lowest, office supplies, so on and so forth. You may be noticing, as I'm noticing, that profit margin is fixed over time for each of these products. For example, baby food is 37% across the board. It doesn't change. What I suspect happened here is whoever constructed this data set, it's fictional data, they probably forced that profit margin. They they said, okay, I've got revenue, I've got quantity, and let's just assign 37% profit margin to baby food. That's how we'll get profit. That's how they related the three kind of profit costs and margin variables together. Is they forced it because this looks artificial to me. Um, anyway, that wraps up this video. We knocked out all six objectives. If you got any questions, don't hesitate. Reach out. Let me know. Hope to see you soon. Have a good one.